Here's the ultimate modal solution. This is the most powerful and flexible modal I've created yet. If we hit the escape key, it closes. When it closes, it focuses back on that open button. Since this is using the native HTML dialog element, it does things like trap our focus within this modal on the published site. And if we click out, it'll close like so. And so if we were to head over to this modal component, I can check show in designer. And if I were to forget to change this, it's okay because whenever we preview or publish, it'll automatically be hidden anyway. And what we can do here is we can change our style here between a full screen or small modal using this variant. And we can add other variants if we'd like for things like a modal that kind of is a side panel instead. And here, this is just a slot, so we can add any kind of content we want inside our modal. And we can have multiple instances of these different modals. So this uh, second one here, I might go ahead and label that as modal two for the ID. And to open these modals, all we would need to do is have any kind of button or link on our page. And we'd give it an attribute name of data modal trigger. And the value would be modal one or whichever modal we want it to open. And we can have multiple buttons and links throughout the page that open the same modal. So this one here has that data modal trigger and the values modal one. Now, if I were to open this component here, you notice we can't actually see it. So what we don't want to do is switch this to block because it's going to override what the dialog element does naturally, which is show and hide that. Uh, so instead to be actually able to see it, we head to settings and on the show and designer prop, we just change the default to true while we're working on it. And that allows us to do things like go to our full screen variant, for instance, and maybe we change where this button is aligned to just for the full screen variant. And anything else we want to change, we can update per variant. And we can also add our new variants here as well. And also, if we open up our embed, we'll notice there's a little bit of a timeline here, just a simple one that animates the modal itself from opacity zero to full opacity over 0.3 seconds. And then the content box inside, it slides it up from six rim. So because Webflow adds data attributes to each variant, we could change our animation per variant if we want it. And also, if we want to animate other things in, like the close button or something, we could just add a step for that, and I can do close. Um, now, here, instead of having to only find the close button inside the current modal, like this, um, it actually does that for us automatically because it's inside a GSAP context that's looking at the current modal. So we don't need to do like this query selector and find the child inside of the modal. We can just use the class directly, which is really nice. So I'll go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and we'll change our default back on this modal. Um, let's go ahead and change that back to false so we have it hidden. And what we'll do is we'll set up the CMS with this. So we can head to the about page. Here I have these collection items with a button inside. And I'll give that button an attribute name of data modal trigger. But its attribute value, I'll just connect to the collection item slug. And then somewhere else on the page, I might have a collection list that's connected to that same collection. And I might have a modal inside of that. And the modal here might be connected to the same slug for the modal ID. And so let's go ahead and show in designer. Let's go ahead and drop in kind of a heading here that we connect to the heading. Let's drop in a paragraph that we connect to the content. And so now we have this modal completely set up. I can set that to false. And so now if I go ahead and click on any of these, branding opens up the branding modal, content is the content modal. So everything's connected there. Also, if I were to head over to the a different page, for instance, I might set this to go to the about page, so slash about, and then I can do question mark modal dash ID equals modal one or whatever modal I want it to open. So by doing this, it'll go to the about page and it'll automatically open modal one on that about page. And we can also send people the link to that page directly with this setting. If we want to just link them to a specific modal being opened, we can do that as well. If you check out the Lumos docs, we can open a modal with JavaScript by just passing in the modal ID. So if we want to show a pop-up after a form submitted or something, we can do that. Uh, we can close all modals with JavaScript, we can run code whenever a modal opens or whenever it closes, and it'll pass in the exact modal that was opened or closed. And then if we're using libraries like Barber.js or uh, 
sort of filtering library, anytime a new modal is added to the page, we can run this function to add that functionality in for those new modals. Now that we have that set, let's go ahead and just drop in this modal component. Let's copy it, and then I'll head to a brand new project and paste it in, and you'll notice it just added that element here. So I can just turn that into a component called modal, and I would need to reconnect things like the show and designer attribute up to a prop so that I can change that out, and same for the modal ID. And then you'll notice that it also converted the slot here to just a static div. So we would need to switch that over back to a slot, call it modal slot. And all of the code is already inside this component. So that's really all we need to get the modal completely functioning and able to use it in our project.